Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is the Movement Cafe, and the Movement Cafe is an effort of the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement. Uh, and I am Oshinda, and really glad to be here and kind of uh, shepherding us through the process today for most of our time together. Uh, we are going to be talking about green teams. Green teams are such a good thing, and they build such a level of camaraderie and care uh, between people as well as in the community. People who form a green team care very much about the community. That's like a really sort of basic thing. Um, so really, really glad to be here with everyone and with our guests uh, today. I'm going to be introducing different folks who are part of our part of our conversation today and who are here to present. And um, I'm also going to begin, though, with just a basic uh, introduction of the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement. What is that? What is that movement? And to do that, I'm going to invite Kathy Velasquez Eberhardt, who has done so much uh, to get this movement going and to really bring people together across the country. So uh, go ahead, Kathy. Greetings, everyone. I'm calling you from a sunny day here in Minnesota. I'm an earth keeper and a lay person in my local United Methodist Church here. Um, I am excited to see so many people coming in and still coming in as the folks uh, get through the waiting room. Um, this uh, Movement Cafe, as many of you will probably know if you've been to one of these before, is an opportunity for us across the the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement to have conversations about the, the activities that are underway in the different parts of the church. And that is essentially what the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement is all about, is um, about building those connections, building those spaces so that we can all find ways to do more, to do more to um, promote the efforts of, of of working on healing our relationship with our with the planet and with um, all of God's good creation. Um, really, the history is uh, fairly simple in that the United Methodist Church has a long history of working on issues of uh, creation justice. Um, and in recent years, has uh, some of us have become earth keepers, have discovered us each other at conferences, realized that we could do more. And so we built some of these structures, some of these spaces, some of these communication channels uh, to be able to talk more, to imagine more ideas. Um, I want to just highlight, um, and I'll plop this into the chat, uh, that we have created a variety of work teams. Um, the communications team is the one that kind of sponsors this uh, creation justice movement cafe. Um, and then we have a new one that is really most connected to this conversation around engaging local churches, green teams, and that one um, meets occasionally as well. Um, but in addition to those two that are kind of most directly connected to this, we have a group that's working on developing worship materials, um, one that is excited about to, uh, bringing solar to our annual, to our local churches, but doing that through our annual conferences. So if that's something you're of interest in, certainly check that out. There's an active team that works on state and federal policy and advocacy, um, and um, uh, one that is uh, talking about uh, the wild church idea of doing church. How do we do church outside and and in in um, in nature in in God's creation? And there are also conversations about the financial elements of climate and um, particularly divestment that has kind of launched itself as a new, uh, not a new, a re revival of the fossil free UMC effort that um, was started a while back. So uh, that link that I put out with the, all the working teams, all of those details are there. We'd love you all to be involved in any of those that are of interest to you. Just click on the links to find, get yourself connected or reach out. Um, and um, if you have an idea for a group that isn't yet on that, we would be happy to start one. There's always, that's the idea of this is that we all bring our passions and our ideas and we want to help support that work. Um, this, as I mentioned, is really going to be focused on the local church and ways that we engage the local church. And one of the kind of a typical ways that ends up happening is by building teams that sometimes get called green teams, sometimes called creation care teams, creation justice teams. And we're going to be hearing all about how that how that happens, how that um, resources that are out there to help make that happen and stories from from our local churches and our inner conferences. So I think that's all I need to say for now. I will turn it back to you, Rashinda, to guide us through that process. 
Okay, that's wonderful. So I think that um, Kathy, uh, as you heard, uh, talk about the movement and also about this particular cafe, um, where we're going to be addressing dream, green teams, green team formation, green team resources, and um, hopefully inspire you and also some honesty around this work can be hard as well as this work can be really, really good. Um, so we have, we're going to start with a few folks and um, I think I'm going to introduce them just the smallest amount uh, as I invite them to come forward to, to speak. Um, and then I will drop their their bio in the chat so that you can see who they are. We also would love to see who you are. So uh, however you're joining us, if you're an ordained earth keeper, by the way, congratulations to the earth keepers here who were ordained last night. That's absolutely fancy and wonderful and so glad. Uh, Don Lewis is one of our hosts here, uh, got to do that as well. So we're, we're kind of all cheering, cheering that. A lot of earth keepers on this call. Um, and the other, so please share, share if you got ordained last night, share where you are in the work. Um, it's it's all right if where you are in the work is frustrated. That might be the word you use. And it's equally okay to show off a little. If things kind of really have gone, been going well, this is a chance to kind of share that. We all know that it ebbs and flows. So we're going to be happy for you. And we're also going to be supportive of the folks who are in a not so great period with the work right now. We also have with us um, Reverend Pat Watkins. And uh, he's been at the center of this work, leading this work in United Methodism. He's not speaking today, but he is here. And so I'm going to drop his bio in the um, chat as well. He is here to answer questions, to be support. If you have a, if you have a question, ping Pat, he, he, he knows all uh, wonderful, um, wonderful that he's here today. So, um, all right. So I'm going to first introduce um, uh, Bob Downs. So Bob Downs graduated from Cornell University with a master's in physics. So he brings all of that to his understanding of creation care. Um, worked as a uh, physicist and an engineer, uh, retired, and then focused on environmental stewardship like so many uh, folks uh, do. So he uh, founded Green Team at the uh, Christ UMC in Kettering, Ohio. He's serving on the board of Ohio IPL and chairs the creation task force of the West Ohio Conference of the US UMC. I'm going to put the rest in the chat, uh, but at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Bob. And uh, Bob, uh, go ahead. Uh, basically, uh, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the, uh, the evolution of, of Green Teams uh, and also a program that we've developed working with uh, discipleship ministries to provide a course in helping people to develop green teams in their churches. So that's kind of what I'm going to touch on. Um, and uh, Rashinda, if you want to go ahead and put the slides on. Okay. Most of you are familiar, and as, as Rashinda said, a green team is, is nothing more than just one more committee in, in your church or a group of people that are focused on a particular issue. And in this case, the issue is environmental stewardship or uh, creation care. Uh, the names vary and uh, different people have strong preferences one way or the other. I, I know our creation care task force and our conference has a lot of supporters, but we have a lot of people that really don't like that name. So uh, pick a name that works for your organization, uh, not necessarily one that that just uh, you know falls off. Sometimes it's tied more to exactly the focus of the team. We have green thumbs at our church. That's a different team, but they focus on landscaping and working with the environment outside our church. So there's different ways of doing it. Um, history in in the United Methodist Church. Um, I always thought it started with Pat Watkins, but J.D. Hansen informed me that there was an early echo theologist by the name of James Nash, uh, who goes back to about the middle of our the previous century, uh, who was fundamental in launching and, and writing about the idea of environmental stewardship. Uh, and uh, we can kind of move forward from there. We saw a bump in interest uh, when the bishops came out with their call for hope and action in about 2009, uh, a number of uh, churches. And in fact, one of the calls in that uh, letter was to develop green teams and churches. 
Uh, I know our West Ohio conference actually passed a resolution in 2008 uh, encouraging churches to start green teams and look at the issues that are related to environmental stewardship with climate change and particularly global warming. Um, the interest has ebbed and flowed, as, as Rashinda said, but um, right now there's actually quite a bit of interest uh, in the topic, and it's coming both from the bottom up, people like us trying to, to get something done, uh, and then that has resulted in, ex in adoption of resolutions in a variety of conferences, encouraging that from the top down. Uh, just a quick reference to the fact that uh, there's, there's scriptural and uh, and Wesleyan uh, theology that supports the idea of caring for God's creation, remembering that we are only stewards of God's creation. It's not ours, it belongs to God, and God expects us to take care of it. Um, and so what we did is we've, we're encouraging and engaging local churches uh, in the study and practice of climate justice. And this was actually uh, the focus of a program that we put together uh, called Loving People and Planet in God's Name, uh, and it is one of the lay uh, stewardship courses that is available through discipleship ministry. And I'm going to just touch on how that program got started uh, and encourage you to take a look at it. Um, basically, the course origin actually came out of an EarthKeeper project. Uh, I was a member of the initial EarthKeeper cohort in 2016, and as any of you who are EarthKeepers know, one of the one of the outcomes of that is to develop a project uh, that, that you take back either to your local church or to your community uh, or to your conference. Uh, and what I wanted to do was see if we couldn't establish uh, an advanced lay leadership course in environmental stewardship. Uh, and my focus primarily or initially was with West Ohio Conference, which is my conference. Um, so the idea was to beta test the course and evaluate the results. And that's what we did. Uh, in 2017, we, we figured out what the process was within our conference for developing one of these courses. Uh, we, in 2018, we actually had a live uh, beta test of the course as, as it was at that time. Uh, we had about eight or 10 people take the course from actually all over the conference. Uh, and uh, we used as the text uh, Climate Justice, which... Uh, Pat edited and was used by Mission U back in 2016 and 17. So it was fairly fresh in 2018. Uh, and we had that as the text for the course. Um, we got certification from our conference in 2019. And I shared that information at two summits that we had, one in 2019, one in 2020 uh, for the uh, UCMJ, and, um, Creation Justice Movement, sorry. And uh, that started us looking at the possibility of doing this on a denominational basis. And basically as a result of the 2020 summit, there was interest in moving forward with this course. Uh, so we got a team of people together. These are the folks that helped develop the team. Uh, you, you will hear from several of them today, uh, but they were all active in putting this together and testing it for the first time. Basically what we did is in 2021, we developed, uh, we, first of all, we engaged discipleship ministry to find out just what it was that we had to do to develop a denominational uh, certified course. Uh, they basically came back and said, put something together, test it, and let us know the results, and we can go from there. So based on, on some criteria in terms of timing and what have you, uh, we did a beta test uh, by Zoom in 2021, uh, and we did one again in 2022, fine tuning and taking advantage and, and learning some of the, uh, the feedback that we got from the first time with the course, uh, and ultimately developed a course that was certified by discipleship ministry for use starting in 2023. Uh, we did two things. One, we had to develop a leader's guide to give people the background that you need in order to to develop this course and run it. The focus again is on local church involvement in creation justice. Uh, and working with PAC, we got the uh, climate justice book updated so that uh, in 2022, we're using the, uh, the second edition of the course. And uh, that's just literally off the presses. So 
We encourage people to take this course for a number of reasons. And one of the things that you will do during the course is much like Earth Keepers, you will develop a project. If you come from a church that does not have a green team or an emphasis in some way on environmental stewardship, we encourage you, we don't absolutely make you, but we encourage you to set that as your project, to go home and develop a process or a goal. It may not be a green team. It may be starting with a garden, or it may be starting with changes in the uh, in the uh, physical uh, nature of your energy use in your building. There, there's a whole variety of ways of doing this, and we encourage you to basically plan based on your church. But we really are trying to use this course as a way of lifting up the idea of green uh, teams and getting people involved. And I think that's probably using up my time. So Rashinda, I turn it back to you. That's perfect, thank you. Um, and so much good information, uh, just kicking it off with some like really hardy resources. And from those resources too, branches out a lot of support. So let me turn now to uh, introduce our uh, next uh, presenter, uh, pr uh, Chris Zinkowitz is here with us, and you might be familiar with uh, Chris's tips that come uh, out every month, uh, offering ways that everybody can sort of implement this sort of um, activity in their home spaces. Um, but she is theologically trained with a master's in Christian education, background in communication. Uh, she is a writer for the Creation Justice Tips and a past chair of her local church's creation care committee. She also authored the Green Team Formation Resolution um, that many of you may have encountered during the annual conference process this year. So again, I'm gonna drop her bio into the chat so you can see more about her there. And I'm going to turn it over to Chris. So I'm glad to see everybody is here. That's really very heartening. One of the things that I have found is uh, how much being um, uh, connected with this group of folks has really changed my life for the positive. Uh, I became an earth keeper in 2019 and uh, my, my project was to write uh, tips for local congregations. So I have been doing that. The tip list now has uh, grown from our start from uh, with the creation justice movement of 1500 to now we're at 2,419 people uh, receiving this. The nice thing about it is something that I have learned to value and that is ripples because uh, when you talk about something related to creation care, that ripple goes out and you never know where it's going to land and who it's going to affect. So the great idea of being able to uh, share anything that you pick up or that you are doing or the questions that you have with anybody else is really um, crucial to helping the ripples go. And that's one of the things that is important. Now, if we can also organize those ripples, so much the better. We are Methodist after all. Well, so one, one aspect of my work with the creation justice movement was to engage with writing the resolution. And what I, um, we wrote the resolution, my own conference, the Tennessee Western Kentucky group uh, tweaked it a little bit and uh, we got it passed at annual conference. And then the question became, how do we support local churches in creating the green team? We've asked them to do that through the resolution, but how do we support them? So one of the, one of the things that we did was to think in terms of uh, a, a tool that could be done very quickly and get everybody started on the same page. So I put together a PowerPoint, which then became a video. And um, I, um, I want to walk us through the um, PowerPoint and simply, uh, I won't, I'm not going to do, do the 
the whole thing for you. I'm going to tell you about it because it is literally a walkthrough of a walkthrough here and let you have a chance to uh, see it. Now, what I am interested in is that you not worry about uh, using this, although you are quite welcome to do so, but that you get an idea of how you might uh, begin with your own local church or your cluster of churches or your charge of churches and be able to um, talk with them about um, you being able to present what a resolution is and how it works. So I literally am going to walk you through this. It'll be fast. And um, I'll, I'll be happy to take care of questions when we get the, to them. So the big question was, what is a resolution? And what we say is, it is an official document that gets the conversation started and moves to action. So that's what we're really hoping to do. The, in the walkthrough, we identify the fact that the resolution has three basic parts. It's our theological grounding and the action that's called for, and then the support that's there. We also start our, our um, theological grounding with the Wesleyan quadrilateral, and that becomes our basis for looking at it. We look at some of the things, the ways in which uh, we are being affected by the climate crisis and looking also at the issue of how justice is harming the first, harming people uh, who are living in poverty, persons of color, indigenous people, and children are first and foremost the ones who are harmed and have less of a opportunity to recover. Uh, the theme throughout the whole resolution is if you love God and love neighbor, which are the two uh, important commandments that Jesus gave us, then love the creator which means love the creation and love our neighbors means work for justice. Because when you tag uh, the scripture together with the fact that we have uh, the commandment to love our neighbor, it's right next to the story of the Good Samaritan. So that means for us that the loving our neighbor means that we have to work for justice because the person on the road was a person uh, for whom justice needed to be done. He was a very vulnerable person in many ways. So we looked at scripture, we looked at also then at tradition, our social principles, our um, bishop's letter, uh, Wesley's do no harm. And then we looked also at the issue of reason and looked at the fact that we in our um, social principles support the scientific research. And we've been getting a clear warning from scientists about the, the needs here. And also that we are in a position where we really need to and can learn from indigenous people about living in harmony with nature. We recognize when we look at the issue of reason that we have the capacity to understand, we have access to trustworthy knowledge, and we have the God-given reasoning ability to discern and carry those things out. When we finally come to uh, experience, then we recognize that there are high moments in many of our lives, often connected with being in nature, where we truly have that sense of experiencing God. But it's also, we have our own life experience that we bring together. And one of the things that it tells us is that by working as a team of people, we can get a lot more done. This, this photo happens to be from a recycle day that our creation care committee at West End United Methodist Church in Nashville uh, has done for a number of years. And this is one of the places where we're helping people to, to recycle and find alternatives to um, just trashing and putting in the landfill. 
So when we look at the experience aspect also, we have to look at the fact that many, many people are uh, experiencing the degradation of nature and that includes our waterways and our air as well. So we just take a few moments. This is the point in the slideshow or in the uh, video where we ask people to turn to a neighbor and just really kind of process what we've talked about in terms of our theological grounding. So we give them the opportunity to bring forward their stories and so that they can begin to think, make the connections as well. Uh, we're not gonna get to do that today, sorry. We'll uh, move ahead here. So we come back then with the fact that the second part of the uh, presentation has to do with the action that's called for. What is the resolution around? And it's being resolved that every local church, charge, cluster, or district is urged to create a green team or strengthen an existing one for action. So Bob did a really good point of identifying that there are uh, different language that we use around green teams, and it doesn't matter what you call them. This is what we are working toward is uh, working together to address this issue. The other part of the resolution then goes on to talk about the fact that we are asking green teams to put together in uh, the course of a year, at least one event or project, whatever, uh, in these four areas, worship, education, practice, and advocacy. Uh, the whole focus on this is that we really need to come together and do concrete action that helps people understand that we're working to make take care of God's garden, but to defend the sacred that is in our lives. And that is the inspiration that we're hoping for. So when we talk about worship, we could do some things like um, uh, outdoor, excuse me, outdoor, too fast, outdoor uh, worship, uh, Earth Day celebrations and so forth. Uh, I have one back here, one back, let's go. Education. Uh, this is a picture of a display that we did at our church and focusing on refusing to use uh, plastic and finding alternatives for it. But education also starts with young children and by involving them with caring for a garden or uh, recycling their crayons. Those are different ways that uh, we can bring children into this work as well. And especially think about children who are a little older, who hear the news, uh, young teenagers and even young adults where they need to know that we are working for their future. So education is important. Church practices. There are lots of things that we can do in the church, uh, including something as simple as putting out the right recycling or composting and identifying things that are, are going to the landfill. Uh, here you have another picture from our own recycle day. So that was a, open to the community. And here's another thing that we want to think about, and we'll be talking more about this uh, with another one of our resolutions. And that is that we can look at our buildings and make them much more energy efficiency, much more energy efficient. And that may or may not include solar. Not every church is able to do solar. Uh, it depends a whole lot on a number of factors, but every church can look at ways to become more efficient. Planting trees is another one. This particular church, in uh, Nashville planted 400 trees. And by doing so, they made a tremendous effect on staving off flooding that had been chronically uh, uh, a problem downstream. And their planting the trees made a big difference for that as well. Uh, advocacy is another thing that's really important. We, in our conference have dealt with the Bahalium pipeline in the Memphis area and also with the Bordeaux landfill 
issues. Both of those were, you know, going to plow ahead, and not only plow ahead, but run over communities of color in um, Memphis and in, in, and in Nashville. And we were able to speak up and, and, and make some, a change there. Well, the final part of the resolution is the support and witness that we offer. This is a, uh, a way of saying that when we do these things, we become an influencer in the community. And that is an important part of our witness to be able to do that. We also uh, are asking as part of the resolution that the churches communicate that what they are doing as an idea exchange and giving inspiration to other churches about what they can do as well. And finally, we are offering them the Creation Care Ministry team, our annual conference creation team, um, th th that we are there to help. So these are the things that were on the um, uh, video. It, it looks a little different because video people do it do things a little different, but I wanted you to know about that. Um, in addition to these things, on our um, Creation Justice website, we have a listing of a tremendous number of ideas that Bob Downs and I collected from doing the work with Loving People and Planet. We also have another uh, piece that will work that's just set up with tips for green setting up a team. So those are those are the big things. And uh, you're happy I'm happy to have you use any part of what the work that we have done. You notice that those pictures were from our area. You can plug in your pictures, you can do anything you want. You're welcome to it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, so yes, uh all this good stuff, all these possibilities uh, to draw from, and uh, Chris uh, is available to answer questions or follow-ups. Um, so we want you to succeed, uh, and this is part of that path. So um, the next uh, speakers I want to uh, introduce are uh, Marty, uh, okay, Topeka Floyd, apologies ahead of time. You can definitely correct that. Um, and Kim Richmond. And these uh, two folks are going to be kind of sharing together some time in addressing green teams. And I'm going to go ahead and put their, to save time, just pop, pop their bios in the chat. Um, but one is from the Dakota Conf Dakota's Conference. Um, and the other is from... Uh, the Winston-Salem area, Western North Carolina conference. So you can see we've got this, you know, national reach here and a lot of things that we can see together uh, to, to create strength together. So go ahead, uh, Marty and Kim. Thank you very much. It's Marty Tipke Floyd. It's a silent O. It's a German thing. I was, yeah, I married a Tipke. So anyways, um, yeah, we're, I'm grateful to the to the movement and everyone for providing us with some resources. I saw this spring there was these resolutions that were floated out there. And I'm the co-chair of Extending Missional Impact Link, which is what we call it here in the Dakotas, and took that language and put it into a resolution that we submitted to annual conference and got the rest of the committee to back me up on that. And it passed with flying colors. I mean, there was some questioning and opposition, but for the most part here in the Dakotas, which is very dependent on oil and coal uh, production, as well as for energy production, we were able to pass that. So now the, the challenge is to get it going in local churches. And I'll have to include my own local church in that effort too. Uh, I'm a pastor, been a pastor for 30 years. And this is a, a passion for me. I've worked with the uh, United Women in Faith on, and Mission U. I'm grateful to Pat Watkins and all the folks that contributed to that climate justice book. I got to lead that a couple of years in a row for the Mission U in the Dakotas. And Yet here I am, pastoring a church that does not have 
a green team, a creation care team, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not aware of any in our conference, which covers North and South Dakota. So we're at the very beginning. I, I collected a half a dozen names at annual conference uh, with a little display table and, and sign up sheet and, and various articles and resources that I've gathered from various uh, groups. And uh, we're, we're really trying to get started. I, I looked at the PowerPoint that Mel Carraway put together and I would definitely, when you send the minutes out for this or whatever, put that link in there again. I, I copied it from a previous session, cafe session and, and uh, reviewed it and it's, it's excellent. So, um, and just what, uh, what Chris presented too, it's like, oh, I wanna be part of that church. That's a church that's doing things. That's the goal to to get to get us organized, and uh, Mel Carraway's guide is going to really be helpful for that. There's there's lots of other resources, and if you're in on this call, um, take advantage of these good people and their experiences. So that's where we are at in the Dakotas. We're getting organized. Um, had a good conversation with Kim, and she gave me all sorts of ideas of what they're doing in uh, Western North Carolina. So. Uh, I'm going to turn things over to her. Thank you, Marty. And thanks to everyone who's shown up here today. It's wonderful to have a chance to share this information with you. I really wanted to um, share our personal story of what we've done since we passed the Green Team Resolution that Chris just spoke to you about. So we're in the Western North Carolina Conference and our creation we have a creation care ministry team at the conference level who has been active for a few years, and we've worked to do our outreach to all of the churches in the conference, and our typical response was maybe 15 or 20 churches or people who would attend creation care-related activities online. And so we were getting uh, attracting people who were already interested and knowledgeable about creation care. So when we were able to introduce this resolution at our June annual conference, and we refer to it as creation care ministry teams, just change the verbiage a little. It gave us a much broader audience to at least introduce the topic to. It's like Chris said, begin the conversation, move towards action. And since then, um, our the size of our team doubled. Uh, at the conference level. So it attracted people who really didn't weren't even aware that we were existent and who joined us in those efforts. And it also gave us a basis for go for us to go to the district superintendents of our eight districts and say, well, as a, a part of this resolution, we said that we would offer training, we would offer support. Could we hold some training sessions in the district level? And so we've had one already that's a a uh, joint two district training session where we went in and for an hour and a half, we focused on three areas, the theology of creation care, the practical ways like you've seen in the other presentations here, and then resources that these churches could use. And we had a different group of people at the training, which was really exciting, uh, not the ones that we were seeing on each one of the uh, Zoom meetings or whatever that we would hold. And so it gave us an opportunity to expand and to extend our reach. Um, we were invited to share and put in a form in the charge conference packet that asked each church to name a lay person who will be their creation care coordinator and the point of contact for us to send information to in each church throughout the conference. And so that extended our reach again. And um, we were invited, or I guess we asked, one member of our team is a staff member for the conference and he's with Mission Engagement. And he asked if we could be part of the 2024 uh, leadership conference for laity. And so we are going to present pretty much the same type of thing that we are doing on the district level for laity at um, the annual leadership conference in January. And we were invited to do uh, next year's 2024 annual conference. We will be doing, they're going to have a lay uh, workshop prior to the beginning of conference. We're going to do pretty much the same type of thing um, there. And so it has just really broadened 
the group of people that we have been able to um, let them know that we are here and it has given, I don't want to say legitimacy, but maybe um, just uh, authority to uh, some of the things that we're doing is outreach. It's not just Kim reaching out to people. I'm a lay member. Why do we want to listen to her? It, the whole conference voted on this. It was unopposed. And so it has um, really just given us the opportunity to speak to a lot more people to begin this conversation. We're not there yet. You know, we still had 20 churches attend a training where we probably could have had you know, close to 100, but it's 20 that we hadn't spoken to before. And so uh, I'm going to give you a, a link in the chat that is to our conference uh, Creation Care Ministry webpage that has a lot of resources on it about um, things that others have talked about here today. So I'm past my time. I want to go ahead and I'm going to be in one of the breakout sessions. If you want to hear any more, we'll see you there. Thank you. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Marty and Kim. And you see how we're building this, right? Some big blocks, some big pieces going together with some of the big push from the ground, from the bottom up and top down as Bob so wonderfully sort of brought to the table. Lots of places you can go next if you have questions based on what you've heard so far. And one question that, you know, I might have and I might you might have as well is like, how do you get it launched? OK, so you have this idea and you, you maybe you've picked up the creation care books. Maybe you've talked to Kim already, and you're you're looking at a way to sort of take those interested folks, maybe a little bit curious folks, and get them get them together and on board. And that's where um, some onboarding stuff really comes in. And I'm going to turn it over to Anita Digert Gearhart. And again, I'm going to post her bio in the chat as she and her husband Bob developed this sort of this um, a, a group study that helps get people talking points, get people on the same page. Um, but I'm gonna let you hear this from her. So go ahead, Anita. Thank you, Rashinda. And hello, everyone. I am Anita Daggert Gerhardt, and I'm gonna tell you the story about how we created a curriculum. Um, my husband, Bob, who's a retired United Methodist minister and I moved to Spokane Washington in 2020 during the pandemic. And in early 2021, when we were kind of settled in, but we were isolated from everybody like the rest of you were too, we decided we were going to take that time to study global warming. As we'd really been alarmed by several things we'd heard recently about the condition of creation. So we created a little book study with friends from around the US on Zoom and we be began to study a variety of books. Well, after eight months of that, we were definitely convinced of the severity of the situation and the need for an educated public willing to take action, a true grassroots movement, so to speak. Because of our history with the church, we thought faith groups could play an important role in finding solutions to this dilemma which we came to call the climate crisis. We looked for a curriculum that might be used in the adult education program of churches, and we actually found Loving People on Planet being offered through the United Methodist Creation Justice Movement, and we signed right up. I think that was 2022. That was a Zoom class, Bob, when I saw you mentioning your classes. We learned a lot from Bob Downs and Chris Sinkowitz. We also learned at that time about the United Methodist Earth Keepers program, and we signed up to take that in the spring of 2022 with the creation of a curriculum for faith and community groups as our project. We hope to build on what we had learned from Bob and Chris. Out of that came Wake Up World, a curriculum on the climate crisis for faith and community groups which was published in hard in paperback form in January of 2023 and actually available in late 2022 on our website. Uh, Dr. Jim Little of Seattle offered to create the website and he has been truly a miraculous gift to this endeavor. The curriculum is free of charge um, at www.wakeupworld.earth. I hope maybe Kathy will put that into the chat. When you get to the homepage, which I really hope you will, I hope you'll go and take a look at it, 
If you click on the three little bars in the upper left-hand corner, a drop-down menu will appear and you'll see all of the things that are available to you on the website. But if you click on the faith group classes, you'll have three choices. You can choose to print a copy if you need a, if you want a printed version. Um, there, or you could click on the facilitator version, which also includes facilitation notes, and we hope you'll facilitate it. Or you can click on independent study, which will allow you to go through the curriculum on your own. Um, there are six classes with an alternate seventh class uh, with many videos embedded in it. So it's all live as you go on the website. You don't have to click on anything else. So you can review the material that way. The seventh class is a class to help you begin to plan what your congregation wants to do. And so we thought that was especially a good one to put in for green teams or creation care teams. The printed version of the curriculum is available through Cokesbury. It looks like this, just for the cost, but um, that's what it looks like. And it's available just for the cost of printing. And for churches who use technology, we find you really can work directly from the website with no paper use if you're concerned about the loss of trees as we are. After we completed the faith group classes, we were asked to make one for community groups, and it's just three classes and follows a similar pattern and is only available on the website, not in paper form. The basic outline of both curriculums, what you're going to learn about as you go through it, first of all, we look at what it is that calls us to this time of caring for creation. Secondly, we look at the climate crisis from a scientific scientific perspective. Uh, then we look at what it is we do in our daily lives that plays a part in either adding to this crisis or helping to avert the crisis. The fourth class is on the justice issues of the climate crisis and how it's impacting people, all different people, but all of creation. And then in the fifth class, we look at who our partners are, because by this time, you can see that it's a pretty big job that we've got in front of us, and we need some other people to help us as well in the roles of each of those. And lastly, we look at how do we hold on to hope and take action. Recently, we've used the curriculum to create what we're calling a minute for Mother Earth. These are 60 to 90 second spots with picture and sound that can be used to begin worship services each Sunday or played in the narthex, perhaps on a loop, or in any way congregations might find them of use. You can sign up and they'll be sent to you monthly. They are free, but we also have now posted them on our website, and so you can view and show them directly from the website if you want to do, uh, do that. Or if you want to drop me an email, I can put you on the monthly list. I think we have about 62 churches now that are getting them on a monthly basis. So that's thank you for wonderful. the time. share our story. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. So they jumped in. They saw this opening for curriculum that could be used in a small group to onboard folks. They jumped in and look what they did. And it's all available to you. Um, and I just, I just so grateful to Anita and Bob for that effort and for not only producing that effort, but being exemplars of what we can do if we decide, hey, something has to be done. And I know all of you are in that space right now uh, as you're here. So uh, I want to uh, introduce our next speaker. So the next uh, speaker today is Don Lewis, who is actually part of our uh, Movement Cafe team. So hurrah, hurrah. Um, and she's going to actually kind of speak to what does it mean to have a green team on the ground, right? What are these practical tips um, for local success? And I am going to also, as always, pop her bio in the chat. Uh, go ahead, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you, Rashinda. And um, it's so good to be here and to actually be able to share out with this, with a group as wonderful as this. I am. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what it's like to start a green team and just kind of boots on the ground, how we did it at our church. And my church was in Austin, Texas, was at St. John's United Methodist Church, which is where I helped start the green team there. But my um, I'm now in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So I get to work with the amazing Kim Richmond, who downplays what a rock star she is in this area and um, with creation care. So 
with our green team, what we did was there were, we were, you know, in all the little groups that you have at church, we kept on meeting and we kept talking about how wonderful it would be to have a green team. And the reason I have these two pictures on here is because one of the things that we really did was talk about how incredibly beautiful creation was, but from the macro and the micro level, and you can just see it right here and how God created this and it definitely here we are destroying it and we we really need to do our very best to do what we can to um replenish and replace it and really become stewards of the earth because uh, we just felt a calling to do that so that's how we really got motivated and then we were like okay we want to do this and what should we do next so we um went through and we realized, of course, probably the first thing we needed to do was to um, talk to the pastor because we really wanted to make sure we had his support. And before we did that, though, though we did sit down and kind of figure out how we were going to do it because we realized that we weren't going to, it wouldn't really work for us to say, we have this calling and we want to do this and to make it all about us, but rather to make sure that we felt like this would be good for the church, for the community. We would be doing God's work. This is grounded in theology. So to present it like that. So it's not about us, but because it truly is about the earth and, and, and about our church and our community. So um, we did that. We got him on board. And that was really helpful when we went to um, to get a vote with church council. And then, we, of course, we went to the board of trustees. And I wanted to make one little note about what we did with the Board of Trustees because I think it's helpful. And that is when we went to them for approval, we also wanted to make sure that we had um, we could get somebody from our green team to be a, a permanent member of the Board of Trustees. So every time they got reappointed, which is every two years, that we could make sure that we had a, a green voice included in their decisions because they make so many about church infrastructure and so forth. So um then of course we had our green team and guess what it was just the three of us and we thought well if we're really going to have an impact we know there are other people in this church that feel the same way we do so we worked really hard we did tabling and there was somebody in our church who was worked for austin energy and he gave us some little austin energy recycle reuse giveaways so that kind of drew people to our table we did tabling, we talked to Sunday schools, we uh, worked with the United Women of Faith and other groups to let them know what we were doing and try to encourage people to get on board. We got in the newsletter, we got on the website, and we wore in our name tags, we attached a little green team recognition thing so we could, you know, people that were new or didn't attend church regularly could kind of also um, realize what we were doing. So we kind of built up people. And what was good is, you know, you always have the regular people who volunteer at the church who are like the superstar, amazing volunteers that do a lot. But we managed to pull in people that were, um, weren't quite as active. So we got some new people on our team. And then we sat and we brainstormed and we came up with um, a bunch of different activities of things that we wanted to do. And we, um, of course, we had big ideas and we had little ideas. And even the little ideas were, um, you know, took a little bit of extra work and there maybe were some barriers up, like even moving from getting rid of that horrible styrofoam and getting the coffee cups to be just regular coffee cups. Church staff didn't want to wash the cups. And so we had to make sure we had a team that would wash the cups after every service and and everything um, that we did took a little bit of extra work and trying to figure out, kind of navigate how to make it work for the church. So these are some of the things that we did that, um, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail because I don't have a whole lot of time, but these are just some of the things that I think are important. I mean, it was important to us to do a project and we did one on food waste with the youth because the youth are who are the ones who are going to really bear the brunt of what's happening with the environment and they are very uh, very concerned about it so we did some projects with with them we had book studies we had ways for uh, people to go out and do things in the community with creek cleanups 
We also um, did some advocacy. We got people to, um, we had a little team that would march. We had a climate march in Austin and we also had one to save the wildlife. And we had a team St. John's in both those marches. We got people to write newsletters. We, um, we replaced the lighting in our sanctuary. There was like a zillion billion lights up there and we replaced them with LED lighting. That took some fundraising, writing a grant to the Texas Meta, um, Methodist Foundation and to also um, their rebates with the city of Austin. But it saved the church a lot of money because those lights last forever and there's a zillion of those lights up there. So it was, it was a good thing, but it did take a little bit of work. The, the last three on this list were um, things that were happening when I was leaving. We had gotten approval from the Board of Trustees for a solar roof, um, electric vehicle charger, and to do the landscaping. And the landscaping was happening. We had a landscaper within our congregation that was willing to go help us design it and, and figure it out. But we were still working on the solar roof and electric vehicle charger. And I believe there's still still working on those. But there's just so many ways that you can that you can get the church itself involved. And the church just kind of serves as a, a role model for the congregation. And you would just be amazed people that really didn't think about a lot of things would come to church and see the church setting this really shining example of how things can be done that would make our church more sustainable and would help protect and preserve our earth. And so we um, we felt like maybe it wasn't the world's biggest impact, but it was definitely making an impact. And then, so there's just three more things that I do want to touch on. And I, I'm trying to do this really quickly because we don't have a lot of time, but you will find as a green team that there's a, things that you want to do that are going to require some funding. And so we did spend some time and it was help it, for me, it, it wasn't difficult because my background, I was a development director for many years, so I, I know how to do fundraising, but trying to either, we had wrote grants, we asked, we did some fundraising events, from, we did a garage sale, we sold things at the Christmas fair, we um, we got people to, to donate, we got some support in and out to help make some of our projects work. And so that's an important piece that, because the church is, you know, they've got lots of wonderful things to spend money on. So you really want to be able to try to do what you can to kind of support the work that you're doing and not. Um, and they, of course, are going to buy some of the things that do happen, whether it's a solar roof or changing to electric vehicles. They obviously you will save money, but it's um, it's important to know. And I just lost that. The other thing we did is we helped develop a team outside of our church that. um that was a coalition of green teams throughout Austin. So we would meet on a monthly basis. We would share out on things that we were doing. We would learn from each other what worked, what didn't work. And we did some things together. So that was really good. We also tried to do outreach to communities of color. Austin is a wonderful city, but it, it's, you know, it's definitely got some, the original housing plan kind of caused it different neighborhoods um, need more support than other neighborhoods. So we tried to work um, with those communities as well. And the last thing I will say, because I, I do need to stop, is that um, Green Team, um, I would really recommend doing the, the Earth, getting involved with United Methodist Creation Justice Movement because there's some wonderful resources as you just found out. And also doing the Earth Keeper training for any kind of projects you want to do because you it is a fabulous training. So excited. I just got ordained last night and you can get so much out of that. And it's just a wonderful experience. And I, I know they're doing another one in March and I would encourage everybody to sign up for that. And that can help build um, your green team out as well. Because when you do do your project, they also are eligible for some funding from them. Last thing I'm going to do, just show you because I brought props. One of the things we did was show and tell. You can just see here, am I going to buy this laundry? Jug and throw this into the Australian plastic mound, or am I going to use these little thin little laundry strips and help save the environment? So we did all kinds of things, show and tell, like that. 
I am going to stop talking. So thank you. So yes, the, the, the pressure in this particular context is there's so much marvelous information and we have the double goal of making sure you get as much of it as possible and also like staying within time. So all of these presenters, what you're seeing is the tip of the, we hope it won't melt iceberg. And we, we have so much more going on underneath and these folks truly, truly welcome your, uh, your questions <clears throat> and your ideas and, uh, and United Methodist Christian Justice Movement, as um, Don just said, it is big. It's big. And you are welcome to join in, get involved and do all those good things. Um, so I, our last presenter, uh, I want to introduce uh, Mel Carraway, Reverend Carraway, and I am going to drop his um, bio again. And his, his sort of task was to talk about what do you do with green teams in the hard places? And he serves uh, or served in Texas. He's retired now. Um, but there's also this thing where we cannot make these assumptions about where those hard places might be. So I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and you'd think, right, um, that our conference might be all over this because of, you know, kind of where we are and some of the conversation that comes out of the Pacific Northwest, and you'd be wrong. You'd be very wrong. There is no uh, conference care team. There, There's very little attention to it. Um, I was told by a district superintendent that nobody cared about it. And then, of course, we passed four resolutions at conference that by, you know, 85, 90 or better, that shows that people actually do care about this very, very much. So you'd be surprised where the hard places might be, and you might be in one of them, regardless of where that is. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Mel to offer some words of wisdom around this. And we are short on time, so I'm so sorry about that, but but I definitely want you to hear from Mel. So go ahead, Mel. Not a problem. Um have we had a great group of presenters today? Let's give them a hand. Uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be with you today. Um, I, I could spend a lot of time talking about the obstacles to green teams. Um, in North Texas, we uh, created our green team in 2009. And then uh, our bishop abolished all of the mission work that we were doing, uh, uh, the organization of it. So our green team kind of fell into disrepair. But now we're back together again. Um, one of the things that I think is very, very important is that, and it's been mentioned or alluded to today, is that the climate crisis and creation care cannot be isolated from everything else that's going on in society. There are so many justice interconnections between climate, health care, um, uh, the economy, racism, migration. All of these things are connected. And we have a biblical mandate to respond to each one of them. You may in your church have resistance to, you may have climate deniers in your church. Uh, and so one of the things that I would suggest, one way you might begin is to do a book study of a book such as Catherine Hayhoe's Saving Us, which talks about how to address climate deniers uh, in the church. And um, so that may be uh, one way to approach it. Uh, another thing, and it's been alluded to, is uh, with uh, Don talking about uh, getting on board with the trustees. One of the things that we have done at our church uh, that, uh, that I'm attending, um, we be I had been talking with our senior pastor for several years about uh, uh, how we can uh, be active in creation justice and creation care. And last year, we started a creation care ministry at the church. One of the things that we are doing is that uh, as we uh, move into 2024, we're going to have a representative on the leadership council of the church. And that's similar to what Don was talking about. So that way we will hold the rest of the church accountable. Now, I know that some of you are pastors. 
The majority of you are probably lay persons. And what you need to do is if you were a pastor, you need to find people who are interested uh, in creation care as you look to start a green team. If you are a lay person, go to your pastor, enlist their support. It is so very important that you work together on creating a green team. And one that um, uh, what green teams do can vary widely. We are doing things like we have we've had a community garden for a number of years. We all the food that we produce in our community garden goes to our local food bank. We have a mission outreach to the community that that food bank serves in that we provide lunches for the students in that area every day during the summer. We provide weekend bags for them uh, during the school year. And what we're going to begin doing this next year is we are going to bring them into the garden and teach them where food comes from, how it's produced. And we're also going to be doing some cooking lessons so that they can make their own uh, meals. Because many of them are latchkey kids who are home alone during the day. These are ways that your green team can overcome obstacles and reach out to the community in which you're residing. Another thing uh, uh, it was briefly alluded to is working with your uh, conference camping and retreat centers and helping them become more sustainable in their uh, 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 food preparation, uh, growing their own food, but also taking those opportunities to teach campers during the summer how uh, nature and how the creation plays a big role in what they're doing. Some of you uh, live in urban areas, some of you live in rural areas, and you're going to have different obstacles to creating a green team in each of those. In many of the uh, rural areas, uh, you get um, uh, more of a, a climate denial than you do in some of your urban areas. But working with the people in your community and educating them to what is possible to be done and always approach it from a biblical standpoint. My good friend, our good friend, Pat Watkins, uh, in the first chapter of uh, his book, uh, really goes through the entire biblical record and gives us the framework to be able to do that. And that is always very, very helpful. Um, th there are so many ways that we can create. And one of the really most important things is communication, how to communicate how to interact with people who are both supportive and who are anti. Um, uh, Catherine Hayhoe has uh, great examples. Another uh, uh, climate person communicator that I've worked with is from England. His name's uh, Peter, uh, Peter Marshall. And um, uh, in fact, Catherine quotes him several times in her book, but reading and learning from these communicators how best to communicate what you're doing is very critical to your long-term success. Um, advocacy is another issue that we deal with, uh, and um, you can do that on the local, state, and federal levels. Uh, I would all refer everyone to uh, uh, not only the um, UMCJM website, but also to uh, Church and Society, Global Ministries, and also Interfaith Power and Light, which uh, uh, produces a number of uh, outstanding resources and webinars. Um, also, um, we've got the global stage, and so we have the climate talks coming up in two weeks, and so uh, pray for them and their success going forward. And I'll leave it at that, Rashinda. Okay, awesome. Yes. 
So you heard Mel talk about all these networks. So if you're finding that you're kind of stuck on one direction, reach out because there are people all around you who want to communicate this and who have tools and are looking for people who are interested. And so you are not alone. Uh, IPL is another great one. And believe it or not, in our IPL kind of conversations, it comes up, this is hard. How do we, how do, we do this? Um, and uh, we need help. So at every level, every new piece, you're going to seek those relationships and supporters. Um, and that's part of how that's a team, right? We, that's in the very name of it, team. So you're going to be teaming everywhere and pretty soon teaming over with life. And that's just going to be such a wonderful thing. There um, are so no we lone are, rangers. Yes, we are over time. And as the conversation developed today, we decided that was okay because so much goodness was coming forth um, in our conversation. And there's no way we wanted to, to tamp that down. We will have shorter breakout sessions. And I think that's okay too. You'll get, just get a chance to like, get to know each other a little and consider that maybe your first team. Um, look through the um, uh, chat as well and be sure to just kind of fill in where you can cheer people on who've made comments or add ideas of your own. So I'm going to, because it's breakout room time, I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Velasquez Eberhardt and um, with, um, oh my goodness, just my gratitude to get to be here. And um, now uh, it is uh, Kathy, uh, take it away. Thanks, Rashinda. And I know you need to head off to another meeting. We appreciate all that you do to guide these uh, cafes so well. Essentially, there's um, going to be groups for each of the um, presenters. Um, and so uh, go ahead and join one of those. If you have any questions about anything, uh, you'll all get, um, you know, not quite as much time as certainly not enough time, but it should be a start. And uh, we'll see you back here uh, when when those close out in a few more minutes and for closing prayer. Um, welcome back, everybody. We always uh, we always know that those are it's never enough time in the breakout groups. Um, the the would de just definitely recommend all of the resources that have been shared and um, to also just as a reminder that we have a, a break a new group that's focused just all about green team resources and Grace Pugh Hubbard has been convening that and um, is eager to have you connect with her to get included in the next gathering which will be sometime in January. I think they're considering two dates, but uh, so they should have that soon. Plus um, all of the resources that have been shared um, will be uh, continue to be available and um, you can reach out to any of the guest speakers that uh, in terms of their own resources and ideas. Um, next month we will be, I forgot to mention this, we're gonna be hosting a, a worship for uh, an Advent Christmas worship experience for the creation justice movement. So a little bit of a different twist, instead of being so focused on our on ac action and in our mind, we'll be worshiping together. And I'm looking forward to what uh, emerges from that for that experience. Dawn is gonna close us out with a, a closing prayer, I think. Any, any other like a minute or two uh, question or answer or resource? Uh, yeah, Pamela, I see your hand there. Um, wondering if the whole green team should attend these meetings or just and one. If, oh, um, that's up to you. I guess, um, you know, it's always nice to have at least a person or two uh, to, from a green team to get resources. But, you know, um, it, 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 so it's probably up to your team. Um, if you've got a variety of people who would like to attend those um, and would like to, it, there's not a limit. Um, it's really about idea sharing, um, resource sharing. So, um, but yeah, good question. Um, and, and, and others who are doing this work who can help maybe troubleshoot something or yeah. So invite okay. folks who are interested. Thank you. Thank you. Where might we find uh, sample yeah. resolutions for the con at the conference oh, level? Yep. They're, um, they're all on the website. I will put a link in the chat. Um, if you go to umcreationjustice.org on the very homepage, there's a link for resolutions. Um, but there's also, like I said, I will um, put that page um, right uh, there. And we'll be following up uh, with, with um, you know, follow-up email when this recording is available. Um, 
but uh, the the lot is available just right on the website. So I encourage you to. Kathy, you might also mention that there are jurisdictional teams. Yeah. So in addition to some of the annual conference organizing teams, um, which uh, are all you know available for for assistance, if you don't have one of those teams and would like assistance putting something together, uh, but each of the jurisdictions is trying to meet. Some meet very regularly every month, and some are are a little less uh, uh, a, uh, less timely. But uh, we are indeed trying to build support networks within our jurisdictions as well, so that you'd have support in your annual in your local church, in your annual conference, and hopefully in your jurisdiction, just to be really making use of the the structures of the church. South Central uh, met yesterday afternoon, and we will meet again on the second Tuesday of each month at 3 p.m. Central time. That was, yeah, South Central. So they, they're one of the more regular ones in meeting, and I'm really proud of that. Um, all right. I think as much as we could keep talking all day, we would like to end things on time. So, Dawn, I'm going to turn it to you to close us out. Thank you. Uh, somebody sent me this about 10 minutes before this presentation, so I think it's kind of one of those God things. It's um, So I'm going to go ahead and um, do it. It's short, but, but meaningful. Um, our Heavenly Father, please bless the sapphire globe and the diamonds on the water. Please cleanse the ground and heal the air and save them all from us. Forgive us our trespasses and make not the earth trespass on us as we have so trespassed on her. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks. That's nice. Thanks. Um, so I, I will stick around if anyone has any final thoughts or questions. Um, and uh, But you, uh, the, the formal cafe is done for today and we look forward to um, connecting with you again. Thank you all for your good work and I uh, look forward to connecting with you again soon.